Hey there, gang. Today, we're going to be talking about a perk that has been slept on by most of the community for quite some time. And that perk is unrelenting. Now, a lot of people might see this perk and find themselves initially put off as to how this perk could have any value when it only helps you as a result of missing your basic attacks. And when you want to actually hit your basic attacks, this perk essentially doesn't do anything. So what exactly makes it good? Well, I believe that the idea that missing basic attacks is not going to happen is a result of a misconception. I think it's the result of a flawed line of thinking, objectively, because the reality is that, especially at higher levels of play, you're going to be put in tight situations where you have to take that risk. You possibly could miss the basic attack. And that is really where you start to see value come out of this perk. If you decide to play without taking risks, while you might avoid situations where the punishment of the risk doesn't hurt you, your chase times on average are still going to be objectively longer. You know, a quick and easy way to think about this is like with Clown. You know, you can either play with using only his pink bottles and kicking pallets immediately after they're dropped. And this is a very safe way of playing. It's There's not really much margin of error, but your chase times will be longer than if you attempted the yellow pink bottles around the pre-drop pallets. Now, similarly, if you make that mistake where you mess up the placements, you bear the risk of that punishment, but it's the risk itself for the benefit that makes worth makes it worth going for it. So exactly how does unrelenting fit into the equation? The thing about unrelenting you need to understand first is how it's working in practice. What unrelenting does, it says that it reduces the cooldown for missed basic attacks, and this does two things. Not only are you going to be able to swing again a lot faster, but your movement speed accelerates back to what it would be normally faster, which translates as to say you're gaining extra distance. You're going to be further along by the time you're able to swing again, movement-wise, uh, than if you didn't have this perk. And as a result, you will catch survivors in situations where they won't make it to a window and they won't make it to a pallet. So like, let's talk a little bit more specifically, right? So at higher levels of play, especially if you are playing clown and you run out of bottles and you are in the situation I'm talking about, a lot of times you're going to be playing around animation locks. Really skilled survivors, they are efficient with their movement. They move very tightly around walls and corners. And this means you either have to say, I'm not going to take the risk. I'll say reload my bottles. I'm going to on average extend the chase or go for the, go for the basic attack lunge and hit them at the window. And in the event that they were going to vault that window, that's what makes that risk worth it. You would have a drastically shorter chase time on average. But the problem where it comes into play is what happens if the survivor you're chasing knows that you're planning on hitting them as they vault the window. And instead of vaulting it, they keep running forward. Well, if you attempt that M1 lunge and you don't have unrelenting, you are not going to be able to catch a survivor before they make it to another window or pallet. This is basically a reward for the survivor for making a calculated read. You taking a risk and it backfiring against you. With unrelenting, though, they don't get rewarded for that. If they, if the survivor thinks that you are going to hit them as they vault the window so they don't vault the window, but you have unrelenting, you are going to recover so quickly. And you are going to move, as I said, faster back to your normal speed so much more quickly that you will hit them before they make it to a window or a pallet. And I would say confidently with 80 to 85 percent minimum consistency. I have found this perk surprisingly to work in the situations I've described very commonly across many tiles. And in order to realize or actualize the value in practice, I think a lot of it boils down to understanding when those situations come into play. So I do think it does require a little bit of game sense and uh, micro game sense, right? Like chase understanding of where survivors are going to be specifically around a tile based on efficient movement, you know, but if you are able to do that, you're essentially able to take calculated risks and turn them into calculated decisions because the risk that normally takes place as we were just talking about without unrelenting is that if they say don't vault the window you know it could also not even be a window by the way we were talking about pallets let's say you're doing this around a pallet loop if they don't vault that pallet and you miss you know that suddenly that downside of them being able to capitalize off of that read it fades away you are going to recover quickly hit them before they make it to the window or a pallet and thus the decision to go for that lunge is no longer considered a calculated risk 
it's a calculated decision because once you get that game sense and that understanding and you're going to be able to put yourself in a position to say, okay, if I lunge right now, I either force the survivor to not vault this window, to not vault this pallet, and in turn, due to the fast recovery, I will catch them before they get anywhere else. You are now making these calls that give you guaranteed value, which is essentially removing any remaining skill expression from the survivors. Survivors are not going to be able to do anything against you in chase when unrelenting is coming to play in this fashion, because even if they make the right call to avoid your lunge, you are going to be able to catch them in a way where it just doesn't matter. At best, they extend their chase by three to five seconds. Now, some other important advantages to this perk is that it's available immediately from the start of the match. You don't have to earn or work for it in order to start using it in chase and getting value from it in the ways that we've talked about. You can be getting that type of value from your very first chase. The first survivor you find, if you get that game sense read and you can force the hit after the unrelenting, you know, there you go. A lot of survivors, too, they're not going to expect you to have this perk. So they're going to be expecting you to be going for that lunge and not have that fast recovery because they're playing into the traditional sense of juking that M1 and then making it to a window or a pallet, and you're going to catch them off guard. Depending on whether they're healthy or injured, you can create some early pressure during your first chase using Unrelenting that can snowball you through the rest of the game. And that is something that is really unique when you compare it to other chase perks. Even something like Save the Best for Last, which requires ramp, even coup de gras you're not going to be likely gaining value from coup de gras on your first chase which is one advantage unironically that unrelenting has over coup even though coup is clown's best perk so that's one thing that especially makes it special another another point too is that it is very flexible you don't need to run coup with it you know coup and unrelenting together is a very strong perk combo but the examples y'all are going to see in this video, I have three matches for you guys. The unrelenting value that we gained did not come as a result of Q. It was purely unrelenting in the fashion that I've been talking about making these reads where we were able to get these hits. And so it's very flexible. You don't have to run Q. You could be running a build that, say, is like three gen slowdown perks and unrelenting. You could be going unrelenting sloppy with two gen perks. There are many different ways that you could run it. However, in this video today, we kind of took a bit more of a chase oriented uh, means of running this perk in a build because I figured, you know, we, I do like Q. Everybody knows I like Q. So the Q unrelenting synergy. I had Zanshin to kind of help with the follow-up when it came to placing my bottles. And lastly, since I figured we were we were trying to kind of just really playing fully into chase, we're going to take superior anatomy. That way, if we get any of these maps that say like Haddonfield Garden of Joy with those really strong windows, we wouldn't really have too much to worry about since we're not fully rotating those windows multiple times, you know, which is where superior anatomy is better than bamboozle. And overall, this build worked pretty well. You know, keep in mind, I have 3,500 hours on Clown, so I have a very great understanding of how to play him in Chase, which means that if I run full, you know, a build with full Chase perks, it's going to probably work a lot better than somebody who doesn't have that much experience. But you don't have to run a build like this, in my opinion, in order to get value out of Unrelenting, as I said. You, know, you could be running a build that is like, say, like this. You know, this build right here, which has Unrelenting, Coup, pop and pain res and you know as i also said earlier you could be running sloppy in place here too you don't have to run coup de gras a build like this would work as well because you would have the split pressure of sloppy you'd have the gen regression and if you you know for people who don't like playing with coup you still have the calculated game sense set up if you force these situations using unrelenting and turning those calculated risks into calculated decisions but coming up first what i've got for you guys again all of these were done with a chase build um, I did not have in some of these games, I actually didn't use Superior Anatomy. I actually used Pentimento. So you might be thinking, why on earth are you using Solo Penti? I actually got this question earlier in the month. I'm just prefacing. The only reason this perk was in this build was because this was very early into our testing of the perk, and I was kind of just taking the piss. I hadn't fully, fully realized at this point the depth behind this perk and it was only afterward that i really started exploring and diving into it 
that is kind of why we were running this. But again, obviously, you wouldn't want to run this. Um, you would be running to run something like either Superior Anatomy, Sloppy Butcher, or if you want to take a more traditional build, you could be running Double Gen Slowdown, Sloppy, Unrelenting. That's another thing you could really do, too. I have a couple of build suggestions that I'll be talking about in my Clown Guide that I've updated as well that will kind of give you guys ways that you could be using Unrelenting. And I also have a very uh, detailed breakdown within my Clown Guide on Unrelenting as well, if you want to kind of look at things more textual. But going up now, we're going to be looking at our very first match, which is on Azeroth's Resting Place. Now, what I really liked about this match in particular is that I was already able to establish a lot of early pressure just due to my ability to use Clown's power very well. I had some very strong early chases. However, where Unrelenting really shined for us this match was when I was out of bottles and the survivors made some very risky and greedy calls that if I was not ready for with Unrelenting, I would have lost a lot of chase pressure. It very much helped us snowball and win the match. So I don't want to say any more. We'll talk about it afterward. And I think y'all are going to really enjoy it. All right, what well, we got? Rest? ARP. Let's go. Let's kick it. Oh, shit. Okay, so we are on Shaq's side. What's your favorite clown knife? Hmm. Oh. I used to run Mr. Hallis, but not as much anymore. There we go. That's how I hit my red stain. Since I hit my red stain, he didn't actually, he second guessed himself. He didn't commit to running in the same direction and he ran back into me and we had the momentum from the extra yellow bottle duration. How is batteries included on clown? My biggest problem with batteries included on clown right now is it's very hard to gauge value from it because there's not enough information that is provided to the killer on when it's active. <laughs> Holy shit, dude, what a fucking game. Y'all, do y'all see how much I love Zanchin? Like, people, people, like, have seen me go without Zanchin for, like, four to five months now. I think we had a really, really long, long period without it because of, like, uh, I like to call it the, um, the sandwich conundrum when it comes to perk builds on clown the sandwich conundrum and we you know we've been kind of fucking around with it and man some of these chases man they they just like we just dominating where do we hook him at here we go dude i have no idea where i was holy shit he goes down now Oh shit, is that fucking dead hard? That was fucking dead hard. Ain't no way. She tried to body block. They probably think I'm tunneling when I'm not, because y'all saw me literally not even like, I returned to hook and see. Holy shit, dude. There are three survivors in this area of the map. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Basement's in here, by the way. Then again, why go basement? Why can't just go over here? It's actually not gonna fall. Cancel my reload. Get the M1. Do y'all see why I did that? She doesn't have OTR. Oh, wow. 
I could have predicted that, or played around it, I should say. Should have gone into mid. Part of why I'm doing this is I'm trying to pull them away from the other side of the map back toward me. Unrelenting value, unrelenting value, unrelenting value. Oh my gosh, unrelenting value. That is actually unrelenting value. Holy shit. Oh my gosh, unrelenting value. There, they got the gen done, but we got the kill. And I pulled them away from any other part of the map they were at, and he's still injured, so I could still go for him afterward. They're still here, by the way. What add-on do you recommend for new clown players? Um, solvent bo uh, the, excuse me, a uh, sticky soda bottle, which is extra, extra one bottle. And, geez, probably, you could go, like, thick cork stopper, I guess. Because, <laughs> you know, when you are newer, you're probably not using your yellow bottles all too much. Actually interesting. Uh -huh. There we go. We'll continue chase. Can y'all stop two-manning my shit? Oh, there's a window right there. I don't know why I didn't notice it. Smart tile chaining, by the way. Yes! Oh, perfect yellow! Holy shit! Oh my gosh, the perfect fucking yellow! Oh! Recovery from this? Oh my gosh, but we don't have any bottles. Nurse? That sounds like a fun time, actually. I'm sure you won't have a problem. You're doing adepts, right? You'll, you'll get it, no problem. Uh, 
Unrelenting value, dude! Our unrelenting stopped him from making it to the pallet! I actually think it bl- Oh my gosh! We used the coup to deny pallet. How is this- Is this actually, like- There is no way that this perk is actually, like, super crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and open y'all, because I don't feel like waiting it out. Actually, hold on. Tell you what. Looks like he is, he is, he is waiting. He's, he's not like, yeah, we'll just look. Ness, that's part of what it is. I, I, I do think y'all know shit. We are going to be, we have updates in mind for the guy. For unrelenting. So unrelenting in this match really helped us out in more ways than one. When it first came into play, it was actually very game changing. We were chasing the Nia as she was on death hook, injured, and we didn't have any bottles. Why we didn't have any bottles, if you remember, when we were initially going to pressure the tap as he was near the hook's Nia, I was out of bottles. And when I did try to go for the reload at the pallet loop, he saw that I was reloading and he was going to use that time in order to chain away to a new tile. I also recognized this, so in turn, I stopped reloading and I was able to catch him in the dead zone, and he very smartly reacted by going back to the hook because it put me in a difficult decision myself now. Like, I had to either reload my bottles, or I had to go up to them without any bottles, and I'm basically playing as an M1 killer. You know, the latter seemed like the best decision because if I, even if I don't have any bottles, I could slug the tap by doing that, even if I go without any bottles toward the hook. And that meant, in turn, I could chase the Nia afterward. And that's where we started to truly see the value from Unrelenting come into play. Because I didn't have any bottles on hand, and she used her lithe to chain between tiles, that meant that I had to catch her very tightly off of an animation lock, unless I wanted to do what I talked about at the beginning of the video, which is extend that chase time, right? I could have reloaded my bottles, try to do a double combo, but then I would be risking the possibility of her chaining between tiles, her doing something that would otherwise, you know, I could make a mistake and it would be harder to misplay. And that was why we went for the unrelenting strategy. When I knew that she was going to make it to that pallet and I could possibly catch her off the animation lock, I went for the lunge and she knew that I was going for this lunge. So what does she do? She, instead of vaulting the pallet, she tries to go around. Now, I would not have been able to catch her before she made it back to that pallet or the window if I didn't bring Unrelenting. And this meant that because we took Unrelenting into this match, we were able to play off of the momentum where we didn't have any bottles continuously without letting up on our pressure in chase. Because this whole time while we're doing this and we're now able to efficiently down the Nia, someone was picking up the tap. And we were not as much behind dealing with that uh, follow-up because of the fact we didn't have to reload our bottles. Now I could reload my bottles after killing the Nia, and I'm going to be in a much, much better spot going forward. For the rest of the match, we ended up at one point when it came to unrelenting, we were chasing, I believe it was the Gabe to Killer Shack. And this is where if I had superior anatomy, we would have been able to do a whole lot more. I intentionally lunged with my Q toward the pallet in order to push him away from the pallet. He, in turn, rotated around the shack in order to go back inward, and I didn't have any bottles on me at the time, but if I had superior anatomy, I would have been able to catch him after vaulting in the window because he was not ready for me to do that. Assuming, of course, I had the perk. Now, without the perk, I wasn't able to move fast enough, and so it ultimately didn't give us the value I was looking for from Unrelenting. But that's just really important to take into account, is that the possibility was there if I supported it a bit better with my build. Lastly, near the end, when I was chasing Tap toward the Killer Shack, I purposefully lunged in order to deny the window, and because I did that to deny the window and recovered so quickly, I was also able to catch him before he got toward the doorway with the pallet. So this was overall really, I think, a great first showcase when it comes to how wonderful this perk can be in Chase. If you purposefully do what I say, which is recognize these situations and you play into it knowing that it's no longer a risk. It's no longer a calculated risk. It's a calculated decision. So this next match is going to be on Suffocation Pit.
And what y'all are going to get to see is how unrelenting when used properly in your very first chase can create literally game-changing levels of pressure just as the match begins. Not only were we able to do a whole lot off of unrelenting in our first chase, but our decision-making afterward is probably what won the match for us. It was a very interesting and unique match compared to the others, and I think y'all are going to find it very fascinating. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. Any clown build you want. I do... I do one clown build per sub. And let's see. Let's see, there's no way someone to spawn this close, right? That gets you everything, everything in the loadout, by the way. I had a red stain, so he doesn't know when we're chaining or what we're doing. Yeah, and get window, actually. Unrelenting value, let's go! Unrelenting value, let's go! Unrelenting value! Unrelenting value! Let's go! Y'all really just fucking drop kill shack for that shit. That's why we run unrelenting. That's why you run unrelenting, by the way. No shit. That's why you run unrelenting. We calculate... Little fucking Geber. I'm not playing too, too stinky, but I'm playing around the fact that I know that there are three survivors here, you know what I'm saying? Well, one of them, one of them dips it. I want to get this one that's over in this one corner, assuming the other person doesn't rotate into me. Because I know there they are. I see. She's not expecting me to set up on that side, so she's gonna chain as a result of seeing that. Oh my gosh, why is this fucking she's gonna she's gonna play check on hill. You gonna overextend? No way she overextends. She does overextend. I'm gonna use Q stack for injury. This is gonna force her to wanna to go all the way to this pallet on the far side, and now I can play off of this with double bottles. If he goes for this, I'm fine with this. Slug and go for Kate. Slug and go for Kate. Is Kate still over here? Hold on. Play 50 50 here. No, she's not. Yeah, people don't play mind games at high level. Oh, there we go. Slug her own pallet, and she's vulnerable in corner. So we go for this person over here by hook. There we go. That's two hooks for the price of one. Shack pallet at five gens and a hook. Someone is very likely going to want to be over here because they want to prevent me from getting value unless they went to go heal. That pink is so I know if they do decide to unhook, I don't think anyone's here and we get the safe pickup. And the fact that I can hook in corner is actually fucking insane. They might get this unhook in the process, but that doesn't matter. I want to hook this, kick the gen, and I want to kick the pallet. We don't have to worry about contesting the unhook, just let them dip set. Turning this into more of a dead zone is the best play, because the only pallet they've got in this corner now is this one, I guess, right here, and this one right there, and then this is a complete dead zone. Two injuries means that I can probably rotate and I don't have to worry about the hook if I play on Snowball, especially with two stacks two. Actually not going to play off the hook at all. Hmm. We interrupt with Sloppy. We get the hit. He doesn't make it anywhere. We don't even need his Q here. There we go. I'm probably going to slug, actually. We know where everybody is. We know where literally everybody is. We're going to go for Vito. We're going to put Leon in the corner. He's going to really, really fuck him up, I think. Oh, uh, we can actually play off this makeup kit. Mm -hmm. There we go. Beautiful. Now, she has to heal her, or else they rotate while injured. They chose to heal, which means I know they're still over there. I can probably get a safe to- Oh my gosh, we need to fucking hurry. I didn't know this hook is right here. This is gonna cost me a lot of momentum. They could potentially get back and pick them up because of this. They could, because they definitely should be looking to rotate to pick up, uh, pick up Leon right now. If I hurry- We don't see crows, I think, gone up. I think we're actually good. We're actually good. No one's over here in time. That's good. Awesome, awesome.
Sure thing, I'll get you next match. I see your build. I think they're healing on hook, by the way. Which puts them at dangerous LT. We're gonna hold our pink just in case they're not. They actually left. They left to go heal. They left to go heal. How interesting. I wonder if on their far gen corner. I don't see anyone on far corner gen. Damn. I'm gonna actually leave injured, uh, leave him injured and just go for this person. There we go. There we go. You can't jump through pallets? Yeah, I saw that. It's a real shame. Where do you think they're looking? They're not looking to stab on my shit, are they? No, they're just rotating. That's a kill. We know where everybody is. Cause he's dead. This is third hook for Vito. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. They're gonna give me a lot of snowball pressure here, potentially. I'm gonna go for her. Mm, a bit risky, actually. I don't think I will contest this. We're gonna go for Vito. Someone's over here. Do I catch him? We force him to go deep. Damn, we overshot. But he goes through pink. Holy shit. Good, good, good timing. Please get yellow here. Oh my gosh, the fucking placement and timing is perfect. She's not going to get angle for this. Pick up like this, she doesn't have angle. Yeah, nice fucking try. What is hook placements? I don't know what these hook placements are, gang. That's two kills. That's all I needed, by the way. Especially with Q, I think we still make this. She only gets so many rotations. Chase. Okay. Is it here? No, they didn't bring an offering for it. chain to this so we springboard. It's about to say I knew you were doing this. <laughs> Tom, how are you doing?
Rupert's. So while I myself personally did swing a tad bit too late in order to properly deny the window with unrelenting, if one would have done it literally just as they got at that corner, they would have not only hit Vito if he vaulted the win a window inside the killer shack, and they also would have recovered fast enough to catch him before he made it to either the window or the pallet. That's what we were able to see regardless of me myself doing it a tad bit too late, because even though whether or not he made it to the window was irrelevant since he chose not to vault it anyways, my recovery allowed allowing me to catch him before he made it to the pallet shows that I would have been able to do that regardless. Further, this one specific hook, not only because it happened so early, but it was a really big deal given that it was in proximity to the corner of the map and we were able to get Killer Shack. You know, the Kate thought she would be able to get around us and she would be able to stun us and force us to drop the veto, but since she was not able to do that and we were able to kick it afterward, we were able to create a whole lot of snowball, snowball pressure off of that. We had Vito hooked in one area to where we could proxy between the Kate, and then after we were able to both injure the Kate and then go back to the hook, that's where things started to work out a lot for us, and that's also where we started to see value from Sloppy Butcher because they went over to the mine shafts in order to heal while we were pressuring the Kate, and after I was done with the Kate, I was still able to get back to them before they finished healing. And that's really what makes Sloppy Butcher in this build so good. If you can handle not having superior anatomy, then getting multiple survivors injured when you have Unrelenting and you have Koo, Zanshin with your yellows and your pinks, you can just start snowballing like crazy. There were multiple times where I just started slugging because I knew that I could. I had multiple survivors around me. I could down one, go to the other, down them. And because it's suffocation pit, and I knew that the other two survivors can be picking them up because they're on the other side of the map. That's free pressure, you know? That's free real estate. And that's what was so great about this. And it all, again, boils back to what I was talking about with our very first chase. We were only able to get started so hard and so easily because we had unrelenting. We were dealing with the Killer Shack first chase, and we didn't have any problems because of unrelenting. It's not like we had support from Ku. Need enough support from Zanshin in order to ensure we got that value. That is just from us by using unrelenting more and learning how to calculate these decisions that don't have any downsides. That's how we create this very strong early game pressure. Now, this last match is going to be on a very bad map, Garden of Joy. And this one was pretty interesting because while you're going to see just some type of traditional value from Unrelenting come into play, there was also something rather interesting that happens afterward. I don't want to spoil. It was more, it's, you can think of it as more of a side benefit to running Unrelenting because let's just say it's a compensation for a mechanical error. But otherwise, I think y'all are going to find this one to be a really great finale. Well, yeah, the nice thing about Pasta Dooku is a lot of the flavor comes in, in the sauce, obviously, because pasta is just, you know, right? It's just noodles. And so that's where you can really, really, like, think outside the box. You know, you can use soy sauce, right? Like, what I normally use as a base is I've been using olive oil, which gives you a really, like, oily sauce, you know? Like, you can use cream, I believe. What the fuck? I somehow hit him? Okay. His outfit actually blends in with the, uh, the filter in this game. I didn't think it was gonna vault, I thought it was gonna hold W, but I'm also getting really tired, so my reflexes are actually getting a little bit... I got caught. Okay. Did he get Paladin? Here he does. I don't think he would. I'm gonna probably get blinded here, aren't I? No? Dude, what's with everybody in fucking boil over tonight, man? Can I just get a game without boil over? And that's also two survivors on it, too. That's either two survivors or one of the BNP Commodians. We've been getting that a lot recently. He's still over here. How do I know he's still over here? Because of the crow. You know what that tells me if I don't see him over here, gang? That he's in this fucking locker? And he's not in this locker. He's unhooking. Shit. I don't even want a tunnel, dude, but there are too many fucking people in my face, and this map is dark as shit, and I don't fucking see anybody. Damn, that kill lunch from downtown didn't even work, sadly. Damn. 
Damn, y'all, I'm getting juiced. They're destroying me on Garden of Joy. Damn, this is just high mechanics. Look at them, they're just running in the direction to the pallet from the window to the pallet. So good. Oh, I miscalculated the FOV. Damn. Is that happening? Overcome value, look at that. Probably should be chasing one of these people because I think they're also maybe injured. I don't even fucking know, dude. Dude, I what are what are even up? Oh. Yeah. I get fucking blinded by this drive. I don't even really fucking care, dude. Pull me my fucking hooks, and I guess I don't know. Get my chases going. No stacks too, which means I can I can just swing on a bed. I can just swing on a bed. That yellow's for me, not for you. Can you pre-drop this pallet? Yes, you can. Thank you. Oh, Unrelenting value, by the way. That's unrelenting value. You would have literally made it anywhere else if I didn't have unrelenting. But guess what? I have unrelent. Shit. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The unrelenting value popping off multiple times. The unrelenting value. Oh, let's go. This game sometimes with how stupid some of this shit can be. We are not chasing main building. You can get out of here with your free 40 50 second chase. I'm taking an early health state first. Okay. You know, it's actually funny how actually bad the FOP in this game is. Like, no shit. Like, some of these hits you feel like in a different game because they're so close, you would just be hitting. I don't know, man. Maybe it's just me. That was fucking pre-calculated. You got read like a fucking book. Oh. All right, let's see. I'll take a corner. Make some, hmm. Make some iron sauce pretty soon again. I do like cooking. I'll push this away from Mang. Uh, Meg, are you okay? Meg? Meg? This is pickup. Dude, she's running into rocks just like. Oh, even doing? Are y'all like AFK? I don't say like a fuck. Ain't no way. I'm about to say, I almost thought for a minute he actually was in there because the heal happened and that was him healing with inner healing. I could have set that up a bit earlier. He actually doesn't pre-drop. Smart, smart, smart. He wants to go for this pallet. Oh man, I thought I'd beat him. That's on me. I thought I'd actually beat him to that. Because I thought with how much distance he had from it, he was going to be running into it, and I was just going to uh, catch him on that. I don't have any stacks of coup. What the fuck am I even doing, dude? Good shit. You okay? I was about to say, I was about to say, I don't think you make that, buddy. Let's see. I think they got caught too. I don't know. Time to kick that gen. See, that's what I mean. I literally don't have time. Now I can at least somewhat afford to try to pressure this. 
Perfect, that's beautiful. You can see me through the window, hide a red stain. That's not gonna work like I thought it would. Uh, we're just gonna abandon in that case. I thought, I thought maybe, you know, if we had Superior Anatomy, we get the hit. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, y'all, I wanted to run Superior Anatomy tonight. <laughs> oh, this fucking game, dude. I bet that Dwight was like, wait, why did he just run by me? Why did he just ignore me? I just go all the way down to basement and... I feel like they're healing around here. Oh, dude, that's a 2k. That's a 2k if I ever seen one. You know, he really shouldn't have dropped, I think. He should have stayed up there. Oh my gosh. Do I have time to drop this? Or no? I don't. I should have just dropped earlier, gang. Or hell, maybe I should have just camped Meg or something. I don't know, gang. Heaven forbid. I thought I'd be moving faster than that, you know? But... Oh. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh. She really has fucking Sabo and a med kit, dude. Get rid of this fucking mech. Oh, okay, dude. Oh, yeah, I got, you know. Never mind. I guess they're just everywhere, right? I have to yellow on everything, but when I down someone, am I right? Remember, they brought three different map offerings, so this is probably a bunch of people playing together. So. The mag does need the support too, admittedly, after what we've seen in Chase, so I mean, we already know that too, so it makes sense, I guess. And my yellow bottle's not angling where I want it to go. Mm. I don't think this gin has any progress. First kill at how many hooks is that? Seven hooks on Garden of Joy? Yeah, I lose pretty much a win already as it is, so I mean, I'll definitely take it. Didn't they give me a three gen too? They actually gave me a three gen too, you're actually fucking kidding me. That's nice. It sent me to Garden of Joy and they gave me a three gen. But you know what's so funny? You know what's so funny? After the change, even though this is the survivors making this mistake, they can just come in and taps for teeny bits at a time. Because it's if they, as long as they stay at a, at a reasonable distance away, I'm not going to be able to engage on anything. All I can do is prevent them from getting onto it. And at some point, right, like, you're just going to have to commit. Even though, again, it's their fault, right? So, but it is what it is. Because this is technically me holding hostage, the sad thing is. There are actually really bewildered and demented people out there who think I'm technically holding hostage right now. Even though this whole game, I was chasing other people. Let's see. Seth they almost had me miss, dude. Let's see. Alrighty. 
should be able to get this uh, cleaned up here now. Because they don't have enough gen progress. For the looks of it, too. Oh, I actually went close enough, damn. I'm gonna reload real quick. I don't know where Meg is, so I'm probably just gonna get line of sight and just try to camp this. Because I don't have enough information to... Okay, beautiful. She has no sprint person now, so now we can afford to commit. The pre-run distance, though, just would have made it not worth it. Jesus. Hey, Clover. How are you doing? Good to see you. Almost put everybody on eight hooks, so... I'd say that is pretty... Pretty tame. On our end. He's not on a gen, is he? Close game. He had it done. He was trying to. Oh, shit. Oh. Eh, respect the hustle. We'll go look for Hatch. Felix is pretty chill. You don't have fucking boil over. That's good enough. That's enough to get you hatch in my book. You don't have fucking boil over. GG's gamers. Oh, did they get rid of hosting? Yeah, for Garn, it was a pretty good game, admittedly, especially with all the other shit that took place. Now, before I get started, I'd like to preface by saying that this one match took place somewhat near the tail end of my stream. And for those that don't know, I typically don't start streaming till very late at night, which is after most of the day has already expired, you know, where I would say about 10 p.m. was when I played this one specific match. So I was pretty tired, and not only was I pretty tired, but they had sent us to Garden of Joy and potentially had, or excuse me, not Haddonfield, they wanted to send us to Hawkins, as well as maybe even Dead Dog Saloon. So, like, this was a pretty coordinated team, even though that... You know, we were able to win and everything, not using any gen perks. They had some pretty great chases in the coordinated fashion so, uh, somewhat near the end. I mean, it, as y'all can see, it started to put me under some stress. Now, as far as unrelenting with this match, we were able to get what I liked about this match in particular is it came out very conventionally. We weren't even playing into unrelenting 100%. As in, like, I was going to make sure it would have been unrelenting. But unrelenting would have been a compliment if we needed it. Because remember, I threw that pink when we were chasing the Dwight. And we were at that one pallet loop between Killer Shack. I threw the pink behind him in the event that he wasn't going to vault. But he actually intended to vault into my yellow. He wanted to avoid my M1. And he thought he would have been able to make it to the pallet uh, inside the Killer Shack. Let me clarify. And, you know, he would have been able to do that had I not had unrelenting. Now, what was especially clever on his part was he attempted to dodge my lunge as I was trying to catch him before the pallet, and it actually worked. I didn't see it coming. He spun very quickly. But because of unrelenting, I would have been able to still hit him before he made it to the window, except, well, I missed again. And, I mean, I think we both started to panic at this point, because when he finally vaulted, we were still able to hit him. But again, all of this is due to unrelenting. If we didn't have it to begin with, we would have never gotten it this far. So it helped us even when we least expected it, but further, it also helped us in a way that we least expected. So that's one thing that I really liked about this. Now, it wasn't as game-changing as the other examples as we saw both on Suffocation Pit and also Azeroth's, but it still matters. And 
you know, that's something that I think really made it worth showcasing. You know, this match was very close. The team played very well, and it gave us the pressure that we did kind of need at that point to at least keep going. If we were not able to catch the Dwight, things would have been a lot worse for us given we didn't have any gen perks. So that hook definitely helped us. But other than that, I hope y'all really enjoyed all of these matches I've had to showcase for you guys. This was a rather difficult video to put together because it was very technical and there's a lot of aspects that I wanted to make sure I didn't skimp over. So, you know, my apologies if things kind of seem like it's a little bit rough around the edges on some parts. But, you know, Unrelenting, I think, is a very viable perk. It's a perk that is pretty particular, but it's also very flexible. You can run it on a whole lot of builds, and I think that as you get more experience, as one gets more experience playing the game as well as Clown, they will definitely be able to find ways to use this perk as I talk about a guaranteed fashion. You can turn calculated risks into calculated decisions because what normally would be a risk no longer has that risk factor. And if you're looking for more information, well, I have a very detailed clown guide that I'll be sure to link in the description. In fact, we have now reached 200 pages. Yes, 200 pages. Once the new patch following this PTB goes live with the new clown tweaks, I'll be sure to also update the guide with that as well. But expect things to keep going forward with regard to that. It'll keep growing and growing. And lastly, if you'd like to see these matches as well as other matches on stream, perhaps interact with me personally, I stream live on Twitch during the weekdays, and I'll be sure to have a link in the description as well. But other than that, I hope you all really enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time. Later, gang.